conservation of energy. A very important law in nature. Law of conservation of energy. Law of conservation of energy states that total energy in the universe is a constant. Energy can change from one form to another. Potential energy can change to kinetic energy and kinetic energy can change to motion to other forms of energy like electrical energy. But there are many, many, many forms of energy. But most of them can be classified as either potential or kinetic. So potential and kinetic energies are called mechanical energy. Mechanical energy. Just to distinguish it from other forms of energy called chemical energy, electrical energy, and so on. So this means that the net change in energy must be zero. The net change is zero. If delta U is the change in potential energy and delta K is the change in kinetic energy, then delta U plus delta K equal to zero. The total amount of the change in energy will be zero. In other words, the total energy in the universe will never change. There will be a change in the potential energy, there could be a change in the kinetic energy, but a change in one form comes at the expense of the other. So that if you add all the changes, the total change will be zero. That is the essence of the law of conservation of energy. The gain in one form of energy comes at the expense of the other so that the net change in energy is always zero. Let's talk about a ball that is one kilogram mass raised through a height of 5.1 meter. Now here, there you go, the ball is raised through a height of 5.1 meter. The mass of the ball is one kilogram. Can you calculate the work done to do this? The work done to raise this through a height of one meter is mgh. Is that right? The work done is mgh. One kilogram times 9.8 meter per second squared times 5.1 meter that is 50 joules. In order to raise this one kilogram mass through 5.1 meter, we did an amount of work 50 joules on it. And this is a measure of the potential energy of the ball. All right, so we say U equal to 50 joules at this position. When the ball is placed at the height, its potential energy is 50 joules. Since the ball is at rest here, its kinetic energy is zero. Is that right? We raise the ball and it is at rest there. Its kinetic energy is zero. So when the ball is at this position, its potential energy is 50 joules, kinetic energy is zero. So what is the total energy at the top? The total energy is Potential energy plus kinetic energy, that is 50 joules. Okay, what happens if the ball is now allowed to fall to the ground? If you now leave the ball, there it goes. It has fallen to the ground. Now, all the potential energy it has at the top becomes kinetic energy at the bottom. Is that right? The reason why this ball, when I drop on my foot, it will do work on my foot because all the potential energy it has now here will become kinetic energy just, see that, just before it hits the ground. Okay. Now, that means at the ground, all that energy, its kinetic energy is now 50 joules. Its potential energy on the ground is zero, therefore the total energy will be 
50 plus 0, that is 50 joules. Let's calculate that. In falling through a vertical height h, it acquires a velocity v. Is that right? If it falls through a height h, it acquires a velocity v. Can you write an equation for that v? Well, v squared equal to v0 squared plus 2gh. Is that right? Yes. So, v squared equal to v0 is 0. So, v squared equal to 2gh. And so, v squared is 2 times 9.8 times 5.1. That is 100 meter per second squared, or kinetic energy will be one half m v squared. That will be one half times the mass is one kilogram, and v squared we just showed is 100 meter per second squared. Now look at this. The kinetic energy when it reaches the bottom will be 50 joules. That means all that potential energy got converted to kinetic energy there. The total energy at the bottom is potential energy plus kinetic energy and that is 50 joules. The total energy at the top is 50 joules. The total energy in at the bottom is 50 joules. Just now consider an intermediate position. Consider the ball at some intermediate position when it has fallen through a vertical height of 2 meter. Alright? Let's allow it to fall through 2 meter. There you are. Let's calculate the potential energy and the kinetic energy at this position. Well, while falling through 2 meter, it acquires a velocity v. Can you write down an equation for that velocity? v squared equal to v0 squared plus 2gh. v0 is 0, and therefore we have v squared equal to 2gh. 2 times g times h. That means V squared, when it falls through this height, is 39.2. And therefore, what is the kinetic energy? The kinetic energy will be 1 half m V squared. 1 half times m is 1 kilogram. And V squared, we calculated 39.2. Now, I have a small error here. V squared is not measured in joules. It is meter per second squared. So cut that off and write it as meter per second squared. Kinetic energy is one half m v squared. One half times one kilogram times v squared is 39.2. And that is 19.6 joules is the kinetic energy. So in falling through two meters, this one kilogram ball has now acquired an amount of kinetic energy, 19.6 joules. Now, what is its potential energy at this position? What is the height now? The height is now 5.1 meter minus 2 meter, that is 3.1 meter. The object is now at a height of 3.1 meter. What is its potential energy? Potential energy is mgh. 1 kilogram times 9.8 meter per second squared times 3.1 meter. That is 30.4 joules. So at a position 2 meter, after the ball has fallen through 2 meter, it has acquired a kinetic energy of 19.6 joules and at that position it has a potential energy of 30.4 joules. What is the total energy at that position? The total energy is potential energy plus kinetic energy. That is, add the potential energy to the kinetic energy, you get 50 joules again.
In other words, when you raise the ball and allow it to fall, the total energy at any position will be the same, 50 joules. That is the essence of conservation of energy. Energy keeps changing from one form to another, but the total energy always remains the same. The energy that we get from the sun gets converted to many other forms. Look at that. The heat from the sun is used to give potential energy to water vapor. It rises and we get rains, we get water collected. Water collected in a dam has potential energy. If you allow that water to flow, that flowing water has kinetic energy. And that kinetic energy can be used to turn turbines to produce our electricity. Look at that, how energy from the sun is now gone through these con conversions until we get electrical energy. And electrical energy can be converted to light energy. Look at the way we are able to see because of that. And electrical energy can be converted to sound energy. And well, you are able to use this medium to do this course because electrical energy can be converted to many other useful forms of energy. But remember, Always the conservation of energy is obeyed. The net change is always zero. Energy can be converted from one form to another. But the net change in the energy is always zero. Irrespective of the position of the ball, the total energy is a constant. You see? The law of conservation of energy is a beautiful concept. It is that concept that keeps us alive, that keeps the universe alive. In fact, the whole universe 